make a note for Dwayne that uh, there may be a new shot inserted in between these two. Echo Station 5-7, we're on our way. 140, um, take one. Cut. Are those your real movie boots? No. You know, three years later, everybody comes back to work, and everybody's sort of more enthusiastic than they were the first time. The first time, everybody was very confused by the whole thing and didn't know what they were up against. Now they had a better picture of what it was we were making. You know, it was fun to get started again. There's a new dance, doing the tauntaun. Three steps like this, and then fall over. <laughs> How can they laugh in this weather? There are challenges about any movie. The snowstorm was the worst storm in history. Snow's coming! They couldn't get the train in there, so Harrison couldn't get on the set, you know, until a week later. So they could barely shoot. We shot, like, 20 feet outside the hotel. Four weeks into shooting, they were already on their schedule. And the bank was also saying, we're not going to give me any more money, and we were stuck. It was a tough situation. I said, move the horn, move the animal. Good. Now look back and you see it. There. Coming back for the second film, I think the audience, they were so surprised that it wasn't just a carbon copy of Star Wars. I think that's what really made it distinctive. No, we're not going to regroup with the others. We're going to the Dagobah system. I was particularly disconcerted that R2 had gotten off with Luke Skywalker. But <laughs> they'd given 3PO Han Solo to deal with. Well, of course I'll have to replace it. Chewie! And brought out a quality in 3PO of um, disdain. Chewie, take the professor in the back and plug him into the hyperdrive. He couldn't quite understand human behavior, especially coming from Han Solo. Really terrible. Really terrible. Okay. Two, eight, nine, J, take eight. I like the Han and Leia love scene in the Millennium Falcon. We didn't know how that was going to work, and I think that came off very well. Hey, your worship, I'm only trying to help. And that's really due to really Carrie and Harrison who took that scene and actually subtly took it into a place that most people didn't expect us to go. I happen to like nice men. I'm nice man. You are not nice. You're... Carrie was very funny and kept everybody entertained. Yeah, great, great. She was able to boss those guys around without looking silly. You're talking to them, you're talking to them, you're talking to the others as you're walking away. Okay. A large transport to the city That came through, and that was the important part of her character was the fact that she was the boss, and she was also shorter than everybody else. But she handled that great. Don't touch anything! Problem? Thanks for your concern. Aren't you afraid the Empire's gonna find out about this little imp? <laughs> I always saw him as a heroic figure. Even though people fell in love with the characters prior to Lando entering the picture, they could not deny Lando. Lando was too charming and too lovely and too wonderful. I wanted to make him bigger than life, swashbuckling, even though he was a bit of a rogue and, uh, and dubious. <laughs> How you doing, you? It's a credit to Billy D. Williams and to Harrison that when they meet, you believe that they have an old relationship. You believe that they don't quite trust each other. And yet, you also believe, even though Lando betrays Han, that he didn't want to that he feels real misgivings. I had no choice. They arrived just before you did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. And Han is not ready to hear that just before he's put into carbonite. Cook! Imagine when I read the script, body parts are hurled against a wall, and they were 3PO's body parts kind of whiffle through the next few pages to find out what happened because I thought, you know, am I out of a job?
And there, of course, you have Chewbacca putting 3PO back. Do you want me to look at R2 in this? Uh, you're looking there occasionally, but mostly around here. Putting the head on backwards. That was totally weird. Action! This was the most physically taxing of all the films because of the lightsaber duels. Every time I wasn't shooting, I was rehearsing. I can't talk now, I'm out of breath. Something that took weeks and weeks to shoot, even though it only lasts a few minutes on film. So it taxed me to the limit. For Mark, he started out as just a farm kid, you know, who was very naive and didn't quite know what was going on. This one, he's becoming a hero. He gets thrown a lot of stuff, not the most important of all is the fact that he was fighting his father. When I read the script, it was so unexpected. Usually when you do a sequel, they want to just repeat the experience. And, you know, that would mean that the second film would end with exhilaration and triumph. It was so daring. I don't think we were ever able to be that surprising again because it was deeper, it was more cerebral, it was more spiritual. The fact that we faced defeat at the end. Daylights. <laughs> <laughs>